Hey Guitar Geeks, Guitar Guts back this week with a video about how to increase sustain with bolt-on neck guitars. I picked up this tip a few weeks ago and didn't know quite what to make out of it because um, the years that I've spent piddling around with guitars and trying to improve them and modify them, I had never heard anybody mention this, so I was a bit skeptical at first. Uh, but I found that it has made a, a tremendous difference, uh, I feel, in the sustain that I have on a couple of uh, different uh, style guitars. So I want to pass the tip on to you. You can try it with yours if you want to and see if it uh, improves the sustain on your bolt-on guitar. Um, <clears throat> it involves increasing the contact between the neck and the guitar body itself. If you read anything about sustain and bolt-on neck guitars, you'll read a whole lot of uh, talk about the uh, fit of the neck inside the neck pocket. And there's a lot made out of whether the neck pocket is tight enough from side to side uh, for there to be really close contact between the wood of the body and the wood of the neck right here. What I haven't read quite as much about is the, the fit between the heel of the neck that you can't see down here in the body and the body itself. Uh, and I guess that really depends on how well the screw holes were drilled uh, for the bolts that go through the back of the guitar neck. If they're drilled to where it pulls the neck in tightly to the body, then I guess it would naturally mate up right here and it would be pulled in as tight as it could be down this way. Uh, but if they were drilled just a little bit off, you might have a little bit of a gap there. And I never really thought much about it until somebody mentioned this the other day. Um, you, if you keep in mind that the strings are keeping tension on the neck, they're pulling the neck down toward the bridge. And, uh, you know, depending on your um, string height, I guess, a little bit up and away, which is why you have to have the bolts in the back. Um, the trick involves taking those bolts and loosening each one a quarter turn. Now, I'm not talking much. You, you don't want to unscrew the bolts enough for the neck to pull away and out of the socket. So we're talking about no more than about a quarter turn when you do this. Um, just, you know, literally to be safe. You don't want to give the neck enough give to where the strings could pull it up and away from the neck pocket and cause damage to the guitar. So what we're talking about here is just loosening the screws up to where the tension that you put on them to tighten them down is lo no longer there. But not loose enough to be, you know, wiggling around in the socket or pulled away from the neck plate. So about a quarter turn. I don't even know if I'm turning it that much. It may, may not even be a quarter turn. But you can tell if you turn it enough, the tightness that you put on it when you secured it down is gone. And the screw feels like it could turn easier. That's about all I'm talking about. And um, <clears throat> I've been doing it the way um, I picked it up, which was uh, to loosen the bottom two screws first. Usually don't hear anything when I do that. But when you loosen the top two screws, on some guitars, you'll hear a creaking noise. Just a little bit of a pop or a creak where the neck is shifting down into the neck pocket a little bit tighter. Um, and then you tighten the screws back up. And theoretically what's happening here, um, you loosen the bolts on the back of the neck, the, the neck can then shift down as tight as it can get down into the neck pocket, pulled down by the string tension, uh, and then you tighten the screws back up and the neck is as tight as it can get in that pocket. Um, I've been following uh, the directions the way, I, the, the way I picked them up when I found the tip, and that is to tune the guitar to pitch, Loosen the screws, listen for the pop or the creak, and then retune the guitar to pitch, and then retighten the bolts. Um, it, it may not matter that you retune the guitar to pitch, but I wanted to do that just to make sure that the tension was back on it evenly, the way it was to start with. And you'll notice that once you've detuned or uh, unscrewed the screws, it will detune the guitar on most guitars to some extent. That neck will shift slightly down into the pocket, and so it'll throw it out of tune. It'll be a little low. Uh, and then retune to pitch, and then, of course, just retighten the screws down as tight as they were to begin with. On this guitar, uh, which has never had good sustain as long as I've owned it, it's a, it's a good playing guitar. It sounds pretty good, but the sustain just wasn't there. 
And of course, there's, you know, there's half a dozen things that can affect sustain. You could have a high fret. You could have your pickups too close to the strings. Uh, you could not have enough neck relief. There's, there's a dozen things that could cause a lack of sustain. But once those have been eliminated, if the guitar still doesn't have sustain, um, this might be a really good option. And I know on this guitar, um, I noticed a drastic increase in sustain, especially down uh, higher on the fretboard. Uh, on higher um, high E string, B string, uh, a dramatic increase in the sustain on the guitar once I did the little mod that I just showed you. I can even feel uh, when I'm playing the low strings um, down lower on the fretboard, I can even feel the vibrations transferring to the body through the back of the body. You know, it vibrates against me now where it never did before. So for this one, it made a, a dramatic difference. Um, and I've tried it on probably 10 guitars so far. I haven't had a problem with anything. Um, this uh, Ibanez guitar, this RG, I tried it on it with the bolts, even without the back plate on it, it still works the same way. Another dramatic increase in sustain on this guitar. I I've had always thought there was something a little bit wrong with this guitar uh, because of the lack of sustain. I've got another one exactly like it where the sustain was way better. Uh, but once I... Um, undid those screws and let that neck pull down into the pocket. It's almost as good as the better version of it. And I noticed that the better version of this, when I did uh, unscrew the screws just to see if that one needed any adjustment, the neck didn't budge on the one that already had good sustain. So apparently that neck was already down in the pocket as tight as it could get anyway because it didn't move. Um, <clears throat> on this... Um, Jackson guitar, I noticed the same thing. This one's always had really good sustain, um, incredible sustain for a bolt neck guitar. And when I loosened the bolts back here on the back of the neck, nothing budged. I didn't hear any pop, any creak, nothing moved. So again, it seems like that neck was already down in the pocket as tight as it could get. Um, and the same thing on this uh, Squire Strat. This Squire Strat, I, you know, I bought it a long time ago just uh, as a beginning guitar. But I've kept it throughout the years. Cannot get rid of it because the sustain on this thing and just the tone from it is unbelievable. Um, it doesn't play, you know, quite as good as an expensive American Strat. And maybe it's a little rougher around the edges. But the sustain and the tone on this thing is just amazing. And I noticed when I when I loosened the screws on this uh, bolt-on neck, nothing moved. So, uh, again, it's sort of uh, confirming the idea that uh, that could be the cause. Those neck pockets are already made the way they should be there's not any gap in it and some other guitars because there's i don't know you know a tenth of a millimeter difference maybe uh <laughs> in machining they need that neck to be pulled down tightly into the cavity before they have the best sustain that they can have now the only thing that i have thought about and i haven't noticed this at all i don't think uh i know it hasn't been a problem on my guitars if you have a guitar neck where you have do, done a little bit of cranking from one side to the other to uh, position the neck to where the strings line up, and I've had guitars like that before. I've sold all the ones that I had that were like that, but sometimes you get a guitar where the strings don't quite line up perfectly, and you have to loosen the bolts up and crank the neck one direction or the other to get it to seat in there correctly and then tighten the strings back down. If you have a guitar like that, this may not be the best bet because when you uh, loosen those bolts on the back, the net's going to seat back where it normally sits. And if that guitar is machined a little bit wrong, it's going to go back to being crooked. Um, but like I said, I don't have any guitars that have that problem, so I haven't noticed that on mine. Um, now, it, you know, am I telling you this is definitively true? No, you know, uh, I've done it on about 10 guitars. I've noticed a difference on about four out of those 10 and maybe a slight difference on two more but uh definitely definitely uh, a huge change in some of them that uh, had always had sustained problems but like i said that's 10 guitars that's my ear that's my experience that's anecdotal uh i don't know if anybody has done any scientific tests on this to see if they can prove that it works but uh to me it's definitely worth a try um for me, I think it improved a couple of guitars drastically, and I'm going to do it on every bolt-on neck guitar I get in the future just to make sure that that neck's seated properly. Let me know what you think. If you've done any experimenting with these or um, have had experiences where you've tried it and it didn't work, I'd be glad to know that too. Um, 
please leave a message in the comments if you have anything to say about it or any questions to ask. Hope this helps, and maybe that will increase the sustain on your bolt-on neck guitars just a little bit, and you'll enjoy playing guitar a little bit more. Thanks for watching.